Hey there, everybody. Welcome back with the Plapper. Platypus is the name, and today we are talking about the Cleric. And now the Cleric has changed from Octopath 1 to Octopath 2, notably Ophelia to Temenos. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the status here, kind of take a look at what he's got. So as always, he's got two actions. He's got the Guide action, which I believe is exactly what she had. Off your guidance to lead town people around cannot be used on certain individuals if your level is too low. This does allow you to summon them in battle. Uh, as well also the um they'll just come in they'll like do their actions you don't seem to have control over them or anything like that just kind of like they come in they stay for three or four turns they do their stuff and at night you can get information um basically this is just inquire but at nighttime so this is kind of redundant but i don't know if anyone else has it at nighttime in this exact way right there's like bribe which costs money this doesn't necessarily cost money but you've got to like break them in battle it's it's kind of a weird mechanic but it's cool you kind of go into a mental battle and you have to break them and then you get the information you want a little bit slow but it's actually very cool and a fun little way of doing it you'll get a little tutorial while doing the um first chapter um also talent inflict all foes with an enfeebling effect at the start of a battle at night i don't think this is insanely good i tend to think that it's better to have the other one that makes gives you a bunch of buffs during the day uh nighttime with uh Rone. I just I tend to like I don't know I, I like guess buffing myself as opposed because I usually maybe it's exactly the same I just like buffing my allies because usually a lot of the buff stuff is like single target and it'll do everyone whereas if you're fighting a big boss you only need single target and so this doesn't feel as good to me but it's like whatever it's fine it's still a talent that uh I believe wasn't there at all before but let's go and take a look at the skills here the skills are similar and different actually um one thing is quite a bit different is um no, we'll just, we'll just get into it. First, we got heal wounds. This is exactly the same. Restore HP to all allies. Um, it does cost more SP. It went up from 8 in Octopath 1 to 15 in this. So almost double. So definitely going to be a little more SP heavy uh, for to healing. But they kind of made up for that in another way here. Um, Holy Light, exactly the same as well. Light-based damage to a single foe. This is where the first buff is. I would say everything, if anything that is changed is pretty much buffed. Um, augment a single ally's elemental defense for two turns. Now, it gives you both physical and ele elemental defense. Um, so this is pretty darn good, especially if you can use this with like a... Um, like if you're Dancer, right? If you had Agnia go this route then her latent ability will allow her to use this on the entire team right something like that it's still probably better just to use the apothecary to buff everyone's stats in some way but this is um a d this is an upgrade right it's not it was a fine ability but now it's a good ability um luminescence is here light based damage to all foes so one of the things they change is there's no heal more there was a heal more but instead you have this really cool attack unleash a staff attack on a single foe two times and steal sp equivalent to 10 percent of the damage dealt um so i believe you just get the sp the damage and the sp equivalent goes up but this is what a thief had um in the previous game throne no longer has this or you know it was um Therion had this and so now it's a cleric ability, which is kind of cool because it is cheap and it does allow you to maintain these, uh, you know, healing throughout a fight because you can just recover your own SP. But also it's nice to have a double staff attack without having to use BP, right? If you just need to want to break two shields with the staff, you could use this, not use BP. That's pretty good. I think overall this is a buff. It depends on how strong the heal is because not having heal more feels like it might be bad, but also maybe heal more was just over healing and cotc one of the issues is that heal more or like heal a greater amount usually is just overkill you're not usually healing above hp caps you know you usually hit the hp cap first we also have sacred shield so this one's a little bit different as well uh grant a single ally the ability to reflect one elemental attack now you grant a shield to a single ally reducing the damage from the next hit taken by 50 percent, and i believe this goes up to 90 percent at full boost um really good ability right it basically makes them immune to a hit i do think that this is again probably going to be an ability that's really good with uh agnia with her latent powers to be able to cast this on your whole team so your entire team will take 90 percent damage from the next hit basically nullifying the next thing a boss does um or even if like they're trying to i hope this works like if someone does a multi-hit that it counts for the entire thing but it might if they hit like three times in one attack it might only count for the first of the three hits so this might negate a little bit amount of damage instead of a lot but i bet there's some specific fights where like they just nuke your team for like six thousand or something like on turn five and this will be the kind of thing that saves uh the fight make it much more doable revive 
this one's actually the exactly the same as before revive all allies so that's it for the changes this ability you know what i honestly i don't know an octopath one um, for three turns skill performed by a single chosen ally will trigger twice so i doubt that that's what this is but it could be also it could be um the ex skills we don't yet know about right now but we're just going to go straight to the support skills again this is not a definitive all information guide in case you were wondering this is the i have limited information in the demo and these are how they've changed in the early game this is the primary goal of the videos also let me know what your favorite um what your favorite classes in the comments down below i'm actually kind of interested now that we're getting through these if people have had their minds changed at all also if you're watching this up to this point it's a good idea to subscribe because we are going to be streaming this game when it comes out in about whatever seven days from now next friday i'm recording this on friday you're probably seeing it on saturday but next friday the game comes out we're streaming it every day for four days in a row all day that's what we're doing all right so for the support skills resilience this one actually i think is a downgrade probably um raises the amount of hp restored when the equipped character uh to the equipping character when healed so this is how much tenmos temenos will heal when he gets healed so this isn't like insanely good on the cleric itself this feels like an ability you might want on someone else someone that's really tanking a bunch of hits that way you only need one heal to top them off but at the same time i feel like the heal spells might already be strong enough to top them off this doesn't seem very good persistence though what they had in the octopath one seemed really good all status enhancements you received will last for one additional turn so like if you do something like prayer of flame it'll said last three turns instead of two turns right so that's just the kind of stuff that's really good an extra turn out of it without having to use bp is huge but we don't have that so moving on inner strength this one's exactly the same 50 extra sp i think this is going to be very good right when you unlock it and it's become worse and worse over the course of the game we'll kind of see how it depends how long fights go versus your sp pool um but i'd be surprised if this is really good late into the game but early into the game this is going to be huge still it, especially if you like have a class change to like hikari who only has like 110 i feel like sp in the early game this will help him uh just be a little more sustainable but this is a, also seems a little less good because of something like the mystical staff able to recover your own sp number three evil war this is also the same um increase your chance to attempt uh increases your success chance while attempting to flee and then number seven here rise again this is i i don't even i didn't want you to read it this is this is the biggest biggest buff i would say so the only nerf i would say is uh persistence changing to resilience which is maybe not a nerf that much it feels like a nerf i think it is but it, again this is harder to tell in the late game in the early game and mid game this is definitely a nerf um but maybe in the late game healing strong enough that max your hp isn't but everything else i feel like has been either the same or a buff right sacred shield i think is better than ability to reflect an elemental attack i feel like this including defense is a little bit better um but this ability here and we used to have the equipped character has the ability to be healed above their maximum hp so that does sound really good but here we have rise again the equipping character will recover with 25 percent of their max hp once per battle upon being incapitated this is a passive re-rise re-arise whatever you want to call it when they die they will just stand back up with 25 percent of their maximum hp only once per battle but once per battle this is so fucking sick this feels like this could be justified on every like it feels like when you well i don't have anything equipped right now i guess we uh we'd have to unlock that number four first but you only get four support skills i feel like this could easily be a support skill on every character here the ability to make sure everyone always survives realistically you probably don't use it on everyone use it on exactly a character like your cleric who can then revive all allies um and then bring everyone back up Oh, or you know if you have it on everyone then you just heal wounds instead but it, it doesn't seem like something you're going to want on everybody but that seems like a sick ability say goodbye to like one hit ko's for your whole squad you just get right back up and be like that was cute all right my turn and then you die the next turn with 25 percent hp but if you if you can go fast enough you'll be able to stand back up and actually heal your squad and stay in the fight so this is huge so that's all the changes that they've had overall i think temenos is a way cooler character but i still feel like this character is a little bit lacking it really depends on how important healing is and i'm just struggling to see what they're going to bring to the table that the apothecary will not just do strictly better 
Um, they have a little more of the upfront healing, right? The apothecary tends to do regeneration or you have to use items or consumables to heal all your allies, which means you're spending money to then do what the cleric does. But once you're able to spend that money to do what the cleric does, you also have a lot more flexibility because you can do light attacks, you can do ice attacks, you can do lightning, fire, axe. You can do a lot of stuff. And I think that um, overall the flexibility will outweigh the the convenience of having just HP. But I do think we're going to have, I'm going to have at least one person, maybe two people spec into Cleric just to get this rise again. Um, because I think that ability is really cool. And you know what? These other abilities are like fine too, right? The increased chance to run from fights combined with the scholar's ability to avoid encounters. Like if you just want to travel somewhere or explore, um, this stuff could be good. And you know what? It doesn't hurt to have an AOE revive on all allies for sure. Just like on a 40 SP timer. Um, overall, I think it's a good character. I don't think that they're going to be the strongest, but honestly, only time will tell. And that is how the cleric has changed from Octopath 1 to Octopath 2. Much love for platypuses per platypus. I will see you in the next video, friends. Have a good one.